Sometimes in Minecraft survival, you want to build something functional. Sometimes you want to build something practical that gets you resources. Sometimes it's something redstone-y that does everything for you. But sometimes you just want to build something that looks really nice. Today, we're going to turn this into this awesome enchanting and potion cave with custom trees and a water feature. Don't you go anywhere. Minecraft is a complete sandbox world, which means you can literally do anything you want. It's totally down to you and your imagination. So today, what I want to do is a magical enchanting cave transformation because, well, I just fancied it and I'm going to run you through how I do it and then offer you the world as a download to play in for your own Minecraft survival world, completely free in Bedrock and Java editions in one of the best Minecraft seeds. Or you could just come and have a look. I'll tell you how to get the free world download a little later in the video. So let's crack on with this. We've got a lot to do. I don't know exactly what items I'm gonna to use to make this because I'm gonna pretty much make it up as I go along, but my starting palette is inside this chest. Just take a quick look at that, various stones, woods, and other detailing blocks. Take a screenshot, pause the video, whatever works for you, let's crack on. And the first thing I need to do is to make it look a little bit more cave-like. At the minute, it's just all in the ground with a lump of dirt at the back of it, so we need to change that up quite a lot. And I'm gonna be using cobblestone first. I'm basically gonna layer out the back of this cave with a little bit of cobblestone coming up around like this. I'm then gonna switch it out by doing a little bit of normal andesite, something along those lines. And then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of stone brick, but not too much, because stone brick is obviously not natural, even when it's got moss on it. A little bit of mossy cobble is also gonna be of assistance here as well, I think. We're gonna get standard stone bricks outside of the moss, perhaps mix them in close to the normal stone bricks, ideally not above those bricks there, because I think I don't have too much stone brick on that. We're gonna bring in a little bit of gravel, just in the floor, I think. I don't think it's gonna be too gravelly because we're gonna have quite a stony, grassy floor, I think, but a little bit of gravel's not gonna go amiss. And then I'm also gonna bring in some standard stone as well, like this, just to bulk it out. because I think the entire cave is gonna to have to have a nice texture. So I'm gonna crack on with that, and I'll be back when I'm finished. Now I'm trying to use as many different stone variants as I possibly can to get that nice texture, bringing in enough of the green of the moss so as not to overpower the cave, but to make it look like it's just a little bit damp. I also want to create an overhang so it looks a little darker inside. But the problem with it now is it's all very angular, so I can use some slabs and steps and other part blocks like that to try and smooth off some of these sides and give it a more rounded feel, so I'm just going to complete that. Starting in at the bottom, we've got these chunks here. If I just put in some slabs over here, I'm gonna keep those green because I think the greens look quite nice every now and again. But if I raise up, you can see how we just change the angles ever so slightly, using quite a lot of these steps here as well because the steps are gonna give a natural curve to that side of the rock. Yeah, that's the kind of shape that I'm going for. I'll be back when I'm finished. If you're enjoying this video and my other content, then perhaps consider hitting like and also the subscribe button. It costs you absolutely nothing, but it really helps out the channel. And then you'll never miss anything that I do. That's enough of a sales pitch. Let's get back to the build. The basic shape of that cave is pretty good now, I think. We'll probably do a little bit more work on it, but for now, we've got to get the furniture in before we get any more detail. The enchantment setup and the potion setup need to be pride of place. And if I put more cave in, it might actually get in the way. So as soon as these are in, we can start to get it properly decorated and put some extra stuff in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna nip out some of the existing cave. I'm gonna put the enchantment table down there, which means that we need to put the books either side of it like that. That means these two have to come out. I'm gonna bring those out as well and bring the bookshelf around in that shape. I think that should work. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and now that makes 15. That is a full charge. What I can then do is take out this one, this one, and this one, and underneath that one, I can pop in a bucket of water, and there I can pop in a bucket of water. I'm then gonna put in a slab there, so that remains a bucket of water, opening up that completely. I then think I want to change up that back so as it's not dirt anymore, change that into cobble, just so it looks a little bit nicer, and floor up with stone as well, because we don't want anything in there like that. I'm also, just so as we don't have any mistakes, gonna pop in a step, just to cover up that area there. This will give us an infinite water source that we're not gonna mess up and empty out when we're making our potions. I can then place the brewing stand right up there, ready to make potions with. In fact, you know what? I think I might put two in 
two different brewing stands so they can make loads of potions at the same time. And I think now we can put in some more decorative furniture, things like furnaces, chests, anvils, crafting tables, all that kind of thing. We can get that in there before we put more decoration in. I think the basic furnishings are looking okay. We've got anvils in, we've got a grindstone to remove any enchantments we don't want. We've got plenty of storage up there for things like bottles and potions. We've got some extra reading material just in case we want to research what it is that we're going to be enchanting. Because you do that in Minecraft right the ender chest is there ready for you to put anything really secret and important in and the furnaces and everything else are there and waiting now we need to put some light in some decoration and some other bits and i think it's time for a little bit of a time lapse so sit back relax enjoy the music and let's turn this cave into something really magical Be honest, for something that I've just made up as I've gone along, that's not too bad. I'm really quite pleased with it. So before I tell you how to download this world in Bedrock and Java, let's just have a quick look at it. We've got a little fountain. I'm just going to pop up here. I'm going to walk along the wall. Look at this. I'm wall walking. This little fountain starts at the back. It's like a little waterfall. Comes all the way down. It's well planted. It's got sea pookles in there, ready to light it up so we don't get any drown spawning in there. Not that you can, because it's not deep enough. And it makes for a pretty little feature at the bottom there, I think. And then we come into the actual cave itself. Now, I know it's an open cave, but it is still a cave. For those of you in the comments that say a cave has to be deep, deep inside a mountain, this is a cave, okay? I'm surrounded by rock. It's a cave. I've kept a lot of the outdoor feel. We've got grass and ferns and flowers inside the cave, as you'd probably expect, given it is open to the elements like this. We've got furnaces, we've got plenty of storage, and I really quite like the way we've textured it up. We even put a little bit of wheat in there as well, because it gives a little bit of a different color. I've put some glow lichen in just for a tiny little bit of light, although it is completely spawn proof with the light that we've got in it. And I thought I'd do just a little custom tree to give it a bit of shade on one side. With a trunk made of oak and spruce, again, glow lichen, keeping it a little bit lit up there. I've got a few different trap doors. We've used different leaves and also some green wool in these here because it gives a nice texture and color. These azalea flowers really stand out from the green. Now, if you would like to download this world for yourself in either Bedrock or Java edition to use your Minecraft survival world, or just have a little bit of a poke around, it could not be easier. Just go to avamance.com, that is avamance.com, and right up at the top, you will see a free downloads tab. Click on that free downloads tab, and right at the top of the list, you will find a dedicated link to either the Bedrock or the Java version of this world that you can download absolutely free, along with instructions on what to do when you do. And I really hope that you enjoy it. Make sure you let me know all your thoughts in the comments below and I'll look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye!